God's words say, In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, to expose the essence of man, and to dissect the words and deeds of man. These words comprise various truths, such as a man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out normal humanity, as well as the wisdom and disposition of God, and so on. These words are all directed at the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, the words that expose how man spurns God are spoken in regard to how man is an embodiment of Satan and is an enemy force against God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God and the truth about his own rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God, of the purpose of God's work, and the mysteries that are incomprehensible to him. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the root of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment. Hmm, Thanks amen. be to God. Reading God's words, I see God's work of judgment in the last days is done by expressing the truth to judge and purify us so that we can know our own satanic natures through God's words and see how deeply we've been corrupted by Satan. Only then we'll feel remorse and truly repent. That's oh, right. yes. I used to always feel like I was a good person, that I was tolerant with others. And when I saw someone suffering, I'd try my best to help. I thought I had good humanity. Mm, yeah. But after accepting God's work of the last days and through experiencing the judgment of his words, I saw that even though I seemed to behave well on the outside and didn't commit serious sins, inside I had satanic dispositions like arrogance and deceitfulness. I couldn't help but go against the truth and oppose God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw I'd been so corrupted by Satan that I truly needed God's judgment and cleansing. Yes. 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 I remember back in March 2018, my duty was to make videos for the church. I was new to the team, and a fellow sister said that Brother Zhao, the team leader, had pretty strict standards for work. And I thought, that's responsible. Being strict can push us to do our duty better. That's a good thing. Yeah, that's right. Besides, I thought, I'm an easygoing person, and I can get along with anyone. I can't imagine I'll have any problems working with Brother Zhao. Brother Zhao downloaded some videos for us to go over to help familiarize us with the work more quickly. Covering things like aesthetics, lighting, colors and shot composition. Learning about all this was kind of dull for me and my attention kept wandering. I thought, there's so much information, I'll forget it in no time. But I guess I'll gradually get the hang of it through practice. At this point, it would be wiser to learn to make better videos with new software to help us learn and pique our interest. Yes. yes. So I brought up my idea, thinking that Brother Zhao would consider it. But instead, he heard me out and then said very sternly, learning these skills is really important. We need them to make professional videos. We need to focus and go little by little and orient ourselves. Learning all of this is part of our duty. Motivation comes from a change of mindset. Give it a try and you'll see. He, he was, was right. right. Right after he said that, my fellow brothers and sisters looked at me. My face and neck went red. I was so embarrassed. I thought, what will they really think of me now? Will they think I'm just along for the ride in my duty? How am I supposed to show up again? But then I thought, hmm, I can't be narrow-minded. Brother Zhao is trying to help and guide us. How could I work with others if I'm so petty about everything? Yes. yes. From that moment on, I began learning new skills, and I got some basic aspects of them pretty quickly. After a little while, I was feeling pretty smug, thinking I was at a high caliber because I learned fast. One day, 
Brother Zhao was teaching us how to use some new software, and I got the concept right away. But everybody else needed more time to learn. Brother Zhao patiently taught it twice. But I was losing patience. I thought, oh, come on, this is so easy. No need to explain it again. So I began to look through other subjects. Brother Zhao saw I wasn't really focused, and he said, Sister, you've got this? Come and show it to us. I thought, of course I got this. So now I'll just show what I know. And fully confident, I began. But then, all of a sudden, I got stuck. I didn't know what to do next. My fellow brothers and sisters were watching me. My face started burning. I really wanted to disappear. Then Brother Zhao really sternly said, Sister, you're being really arrogant and show no interest in what you're learning. How can you do your duty well that way? Mm. Yes. Of course, I disagreed with what he had to say. I thought, you just never liked me. You're testing me and no one else. Are you just trying to make me look foolish? And you keep reprimanding me in front of everyone. Isn't that going to make people think I am arrogant? After this, how am I going to be able to get along with anyone? I thought Brother Zhao was only trying to make me look bad. He was picking a bone with me. And I began to feel prejudiced against him. From then on, I only half-consciously started avoiding him. When he asked me about my duty, I'd barely acknowledge him. I'd barely talk. I was afraid he'd reprimand me if he discovered any problems in my work. But the more I avoided him, the more mistakes I seemed to make. It seemed he was constantly correcting me. This left me really irritable and really unhappy with Brother Zhao. I thought, you're always embarrassing me. So the next time that you make a mistake, I'm going to call it out in front of everyone so you can get a taste of your own medicine. Later on, another sister came to join our group. I gave her a basic orientation. And when it came to Brother Zhao, I vented all of my opinions and all of my prejudices about him. I felt very uneasy after that, wondering if I was judging him. Then I thought, well, I was giving her my honest opinion so that she would know something about his personality and deal with him as she thought best. Finally, I just left it alone. Soon after that, I heard that a sister told the church leader about Brother Zhao's duty issues. I thought, this is my chance to share my thoughts too. The leader will probably deal with Brother Zhao based on what we say. And finally, he'll know exactly what it feels like. Maybe after being dealt with, he'll be gone. And I won't have to face him anymore. With this in mind, I shared what I thought were Brother Zhao's faults and corruptions with the leader. I thought he'd be replaced with somebody else. But surprisingly, a few days later, when the leader summed up everyone's evaluations, she said that Brother Zhao revealed some corruption, but also had some self-awareness, and that he took responsibility for his duty and could do practical work. He kept his leadership role. I was really disappointed to know he'd stay. Later on, the leader talked to me. Sister, when we were discussing Brother Zhao's issues, you only mentioned his corruptions. Are you prejudiced against him? He's a very direct person, so when he sees someone do something contrary to the principles of the truth, he doesn't beat around the bush. Sometimes he comes on a bit strong, but he just wants to help brothers and sisters and uphold the work of the church. We need to be sure here. If we switch him to another duty, it would disrupt the work of the church. When talking about Brother Zhao, we have to examine whether what we were saying and doing was in line with the truth, if our motives were proper or if we were prejudiced. Yes. Yes. What the leader told me made me realize I had a serious issue. Thinking back on how I behaved over time, I'd done my duty with Brother Zhao. It didn't feel good at all. 
I prayed to God about my state of mind and later read these words of God. Those among brothers and sisters who are always giving vent to their negativity are lackeys of Satan, and they disturb the church. Such people must one day be expelled and eliminated. In their belief in God, if people do not have a heart of reverence for God, if they do not have a heart of obedience towards God, then not only will they be unable to do any work for Him, but on the contrary will become those who disturb His work and who defy Him. Believing in God, but not obeying or revering Him, and instead resisting Him, is the greatest disgrace for a believer. People who genuinely believe in God always have Him in their hearts, and they always carry within them a God-revering heart and a God-loving heart. Those who believe in God should do things cautiously and prudently, and all that they do should be in accordance with God's requirements and able to satisfy His heart. They should not be headstrong, doing whatever they please. That does not befit saintly propriety. People must not run amok, waving the flag of God all over the place while swaggering and swindling everywhere. This is the most rebellious sort of conduct. Families have their rules, and nations have their laws, and isn't it even more so in the house of God? Aren't the standards even stricter? Aren't there even more administrative decrees? People are free to do what they want, but the administrative decrees of God cannot be altered at will. God is a God who does not tolerate offense from humans. Amen. Amen. God's words really cut to the quick. God's disposition brooks no offense. God has administrative decrees. If someone speaks and acts without reverence for God, running amok like an unbeliever, covertly judging others, sowing discord, and disrupting the church's work, then that person is a minion of Satan. God would never allow someone like that to remain in the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. I thought about my own behavior and what I'd revealed in my duty with Brother Zhao. I'd become biased against him only because he showed me my flaws in front of others and wounded my pride. I also vented my prejudices about him to a new sister, judging him behind his back. I tried to make him look bad on purpose. When I heard someone criticizing and questioning Brother Zhao's duty, I would fully support them, eager for the church leader to replace him and send him off packing. Wasn't I showing a malicious, satanic nature? How was I being a person of faith? I realized that by pointing out my faults and shortcomings in my duty, Brother Zhao was upholding the church's work and was helping me. But I became biased against him because it hurt my pride. I kept judging him, always trying to get something on him, hoping to squeeze him out. What kind of role was I playing? Wasn't I sabotaging God's work? Wasn't I being Satan's minion? Mm. This thought really frightened me. If the church leader hadn't examined it by principles and kept him in his duty, the team's work would have been severely impacted. I felt self-reproach and regret, and guilty about Brother Zhao. I saw I was lacking humanity. If it hadn't been for the revelation of God's words, then as numb as I was, I wouldn't have reflected on myself. I would have kept doing evil and disrupting the work of the church, and God would have forsaken me. I realized how dangerous it would be if my malicious satanic disposition wasn't resolved. I started to reflect on things, wondering the real cause behind the satanic disposition I revealed. I later read these words of God. Born into such a filthy land, man has been severely blighted by society. He has been influenced by feudal ethics and he has been taught at institutes of higher learning. The backward thinking, corrupt morality, mean view on life, despicable philosophy for living, utterly worthless existence, and depraved lifestyle and customs. All of these things have severely intruded upon man's heart and severely undermined and attacked his conscience. As a result, man is ever more distant from God 
and ever more opposed to him. Man's disposition becomes more vicious by the day, and there is not a single person who will willingly give up anything for God, not a single person who will willingly obey God, nor, moreover, a single person who will willingly seek the appearance of God. Instead, under the domain of Satan, man does nothing but pursue pleasure, giving himself over to the corruption of the flesh in the land of mud. People think like this, if you're not going to be kind, then I won't be just. If you're rude to me, then I'll be rude to you as well. If you don't treat me with dignity, why would I treat you with dignity? What sort of thinking is this? Is it not a vengeful way of thinking? In the views of an ordinary person, is this type of perspective not viable? An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Here's a taste of your own medicine. Among unbelievers, these are all rationales that hold water and completely conform to human notions. However, as someone who believes in God, as someone who seeks to understand the truth and seeks a change in disposition, would you say that such words are right or wrong? What should you do to discern them? Where do such things come from? They come from the malicious nature of Satan. They contain venom, and they contain the true face of Satan in all its maliciousness and ugliness. They contain the very essence of that nature. What is the character of the perspectives, thoughts, expressions, speech, and even actions that contain that nature's essence? Are they not of Satan? Are these aspects of Satan in line with humanity? Are they in line with the truth or with the reality of the truth? Are they the actions that followers of God should do and the thoughts and points of view that they should possess? I understood from God's words that revealing this disposition and doing this kind of cruel thing wasn't momentary corruption. It was Satan's nature controlling over me. Through social conditioning and national education, Satan inculcates people. Like, we fight fire with fire. If you attack, we attack. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. And here's a taste of your own medicine. Poisoned by these satanic philosophies, people become more and more arrogant, underhanded, deceitful and they become willing to go to any lengths to try to protect their own interests. People don't know how to interact with each other. They're impatient. They have no understanding. As soon as they feel like their image is threatened, they become biased against others. They exclude them, despise them, and even take revenge. It's just like the CCP's dictatorship, protecting its great glorious image. No one is permitted to reveal its many evil deeds. People can only sing its praises. Anyone who exposes the Communist Party and hurts its glorious image will be severely punished. They charge people with all sorts of fabricated crimes to imprison them and kill them if they want to. The Great Red Dragon is so savage. It is, it's true. I've been poisoned and harmed by the Great Red Dragon's toxins since I was a little girl, I'm arrogant, don't accept the truth, and I don't let others expose me. I can't get along with anyone who threatens my interests and even treat them like an enemy. Brother Zhao dared to be honest, to point out my actual shortcomings. And not only did I fail to be humble enough to accept his help, but I also developed a grudge against him because it affected my status. I undermined him and gossiped, just to get him replaced. Then it hit me. I became Satan's lackey, disturbing the work of the church. Only then did I see how deeply Satan had corrupted me. I was by nature selfish, deceitful too. I only revealed corruptions without any normal humanity. I saw that if this wasn't resolved, I was bound to be destroyed by God. That's true. Yes, it's true. true. Before this, I thought of myself as tolerant and overall a good person. It was because my own interests hadn't been compromised. 
But once my interests felt threatened, my satanic disposition showed up. Yes. 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 I started to hate myself. I didn't want to live this way and oppose God anymore. I then said a prayer of repentance to God, willing to pursue the truth, to accept the judgment of God's words and cast off my satanic nature. Mm -hmm. Later, I read this in God's words. If in their belief in God, people do not frequently live before him, then they will not be able to have any reverence for him and so will be incapable of shunning evil. These things are connected. If your heart often lives before God, you will be held in check and will fear God in many things. You will not go too far or do anything that is dissolute. You will not do that which is loathed by God and will not speak words that have no sense. If you accept God's observation and accept God's discipline, you will avoid doing many evil things. As such, will you not have shunned evil? Amen. 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 From God's words, I saw that having reverence for him was absolutely critical. Yes. yes. We have to live before God and accept God's scrutiny in our words and actions. Even though it's hard to accept, or we may feel resistant when our interests are threatened, with a heart of reverence for God, we can set ourselves aside through prayer, seek the truth, focus on the work of God's house and our duty, and not do anything to rebel against God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I began to act by God's words, and this freed me from my bias against Brother Zhao. I felt he was trying to correct my mistakes so I could improve and could achieve better results in my duty. Oh, yes. Indeed. Indeed. Now when I run into a problem, I'm able to ask him for advice. And through his suggestions and help, I've improved on my weak points. I've started to do much better in the duties I'm assigned. And I feel at ease and at peace. Thanks, Thanks, be, to Thanks be to God. It was only through the judgment of God's words that I was able to change and saw God's work to save us is real. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. God uses his words to judge and cleanse people, to refine and protect us. And this is his love and salvation. Yes. Amen. 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 God's words tell us, God uses his judgment to make man perfect. He has loved man and saved man. But, but how, how much, much is contained within his love? love? There is judgment, majesty, wrath, and curse. He curses you so that you might love him and so that you might know the essence of the flesh. He chastises you in order that you might be awakened to allow you to know the deficiencies within you and to know man's utter unworthiness. Thus, God's curses, his judgment, and his majesty and wrath they are all in order to make man perfect. All that God does today and the righteous disposition that he makes plain within you is all in order to make man perfect. Such is the love of God. Amen. Thanks be to God.